All right, look at this exciting series of questions about forces. They're exciting um, to me because I love physics. Um, and they're exciting to you because I guess they're the source of your physics-related stress for the next couple of days. That was a teacher joke, but it probably wasn't very funny. All right, now, so the difference between weight and normal force. Let's be clear. Um, weight means, and I'll, I'm serious, I will give you 100% credit if you simply write a weight as being Earth's pull on an object. Okay? Now, the normal force, um, and you know, just to be safe, I'd want to draw it too. It's the perpendicular force on an object from a surface. I point this out because I'm hearing some sloppy language. I'm hearing students say it's a perpendicular force on a surface. No. So I want to be clear for normal force, okay? Wrong answer for normal is perpendicular force on a surface. That is not the answer. The correct answer, if you want the right answer, it looks like this, and I'm very picky about words on this. The the right answer is from, okay, just to be clear. All right, now the next question, what is the difference between mass and inertia? Let's go ahead and clarify that. So, the difference between mass and inertia um, is, for our purposes in this class, we are saying that they are the same thing. You'll hear some, so there is no difference. You'll hear some physics textbooks tell you, well, mass is a way to measure inertia, um, which is fine. I mean... We can say it that way, but for our purposes, we are going to say that they are 100% identical and the same thing. Okay, so that's, that's kind of where we're going. All right, what is the definition of inertia? So I'm going to write out a full definition here just so that we are clear on it. So the definition of inertia that we are going to use in this um, work here and in our class is, and for now, just because we got a final coming up in a couple of days, I want you to memorize this and I want you to be able to reproduce this on the test, okay? Um, because remember, our goal here is this is an honors physics class, but I'm always thinking about, you know, that IB class in a couple of years and that AP class. And our goal in this class is that you kind of do the work now so that if you decide to take those classes, you are in a good place and those classes are just like, awesome, and I wouldn't say that you're coasting, but you're not struggling either. So the definition that we want, textbook definition of inertia, okay, is the following. So inertia is, it's got three parts to it. I'm going to kind of summarize them, and then I'm going to write them out. Okay, well, actually, I'm going to write them out, and then I'll summarize them at the end. So, what inertia is, is the tendency of an object at rest to stay at rest. The second tendency that is related is it's the tendency of an object 
to stay moving at constant velocity. And the last part of inertia is if an object speeds up, slows down, so speeds up, slows down, or changes direction. It's because of a net unbalanced force. Okay. All of that is inertia, and I want all of that on your test. Okay. No. If, the, if an object is accelerating, that means the forces on it are unbalanced. All right, lastly. An object moves to the right at constant velocity. This means the forces on it are balanced. Awesome. Now, last thing. An object is pushed while moving with a force that exactly balances the lanes. Sorry. Balances the friction force. The person then stops pushing the object. You want to describe the motion of the object and explain what will happen to it as time goes by in the situation. So, at first, it moves, let me say that one more time, at first it moves with constant velocity. Okay. The person lets it go, so only the force of friction acts. It then slows down to a stop over time. So basically, it's going to take some time, so it, it immediately starts slowing down the second you let it go. And it continues to do that until it comes to rest. So that is questions 11 through 16.